getting Colorado back on track. It's starting to feel a little bit hopeful, I think, getting back to normal. Despite gloomy weather, the downtown crowds are back and bringing a little ray of sunshine for businesses looking to rebound. We see the light um, and, and we're working towards it. And one step closer to full capacity, the new state health order that could bring us back to packed arenas. And a local veterans business hits a major snag. They got everything, man. It was, it was soul crushing. Definitely hurts. How you can help him rebuild and get his handyman service back. Just in time for the unofficial kickoff to summer, Colorado's ditching indoor capacity restrictions. At least the state is saying counties and venues can choose to ditch the capacity restrictions if they'd like. Thanks so much for joining us here at 5. I'm Jason Grenauer. I'm Ann Trujillo. Glad you're with us on this Memorial Day. Now let's go in depth on what exactly in the state's, what is in the state's new public health order. So first of all, kids 11 and under are now exempt from mask orders. That's because only kids 12 and older have been approved for the Pfizer COVID-19 vaccine. Also, indoor restrictions are out the window. Previously, indoor gatherings were capped at 500 people unless they were approved by CDPHE. And just last night, Ball Arena in Denver allowed in 10,500 fans as the Avs kicked off round two of the playoffs. Plus, the Nuggets are in their own playoff run as well, but Ball Arena's variance request was granted by the city of Denver. We're still waiting for a call back from the city on if this new order means the area will be able to go back, the arena, I should say, will be able to go back to full capacity sooner than anticipated. With playoffs and the long holiday weekend, downtown businesses are hopeful this is a sign of the summer crowds to come, and the rebound couldn't come at a better time. According to the 2021 State of Downtown Denver report, retail sales tax collections for downtown businesses were down 42% compared to the year before. That's more than 25% less than the rest of the city, where retail sales taxes dipped 15%. And despite the rain, downtown crowds, are they're picking back up. Denver 7's Patrick Perez joins us near Coors Field and Milk Market. Patrick, business owners say it's been a healthy mix of locals getting out and out-of-towners. Yeah, and we're talking people from New York, from California, from Florida, all over the place. Now, we obviously know that if you were here this weekend, the weather was not nice whatsoever. I mean, even today while working on the story, it was raining this morning, but still, we saw this weekend that that didn't really impact anything. A rainy start to Memorial Day at Denver 16th Street Mall. Still not enough to keep people away. The entire weekend was practically a washout, but up at Topo Designs in the Dairy Block, the bad weather helped bring in some extra business. We saw some pretty big crowds down here. Becca Suizo says people taking refuge from the stormy skies came into her store to check out the bags and clothing. I've definitely seen it pick up recently in the last like month or two, and at least in the last few weeks. Lots of people are ready to get out of the house and shop. At Second Love Boutique on 31st and Tennyson. Hi there, welcome. The Memorial Day weekend crowds kept Nicole Lankowski busy on Friday before the rain came down. We had so many people coming from out of town, which is my favorite part. Lots of people from like Texas, Portland, New York, Connecticut, all over, so. Almost as if we're returning to pre-pandemic times. I think people now especially are really, really trying to just be normal again. An example of that, the Sheraton Denver downtown. Now most of those restrictions are gone, so uh, I think it's building the confidence back. General Manager Tony Dunn says his hotel had roughly a 92% occupancy rate this weekend. Compare that to 10% last Memorial Day weekend. It's night and day. We see the light um, and, and we're working towards it, but it, it is it is hopeful. But the journey back to normal isn't over. This hotel is still in need of at least 250 employees. We're struggling uh, within, you know, trying to do everything we can to get our, our associates back in the industry, whether it's incentives, uh, whether it's just kind of trying to reinvent ourselves. Uh, you know, it's just, uh, we're, that's our biggest struggle right now. But if this weekend was any indication of what's to come, the future is bright for Denver shops and hotels. Patrick Perez, Denver 7. One of the biggest things driving our rebound, vaccinations. By the way, the first $1 million prize for the state's Colorado Comeback Cash Sweepstakes will be announced this Friday. Denver 7 has been taking an in-depth look at the state's vaccine data, especially since we are still getting complaints from people who have been vaccinated, finding out that they aren't in Colorado's vaccine database. But in a new statement, CDPHE is now saying if you don't see your name, that's actually okay. You likely still are in the system, and the issue could be as simple as a typo in the record system. We're still asking for clarification. 
cold, misty, and downright dreary. Memorial Day, usually that unofficial kickoff to summer, but looking outside today, you'd probably think otherwise. We have some good news, though, for you. That summer weather is right around the corner. And meteorologist Stacy Donaldson is joining us. And Stacy, we got plenty of rain across Colorado over this weekend. We really did. Much needed rain, and it's helping with the drought immensely. But yeah, for our holiday weekend, all those swimming pools supposed to be opened, and it was very chilly. Temperatures in the 50s right now here across the Front Range. We have 40s off to the west, only 28 at Bertha Pass right now. And we still have rain down, especially to our south heavy rain with a flash flood watch in effect until 10 o'clock off to the west we also have a flash flood warning in parts of Grand County but here in Denver we've seen improving conditions we'll continue to see showers push to the south and we will have clearing skies here in Denver but we're still watching for that heavy rainfall off to our west here in Denver though a few sprinkles here and there with those cloudy skies now we'll have clearing skies for the rest of tonight 45 will be our overnight low and yes a beautiful warm-up headed our way I'll let you know how hot it's going to get in just a few minutes all right, Stacy. thank you. One man in Steamboat Springs is now recovering after being attacked near his garage by a mama bear and her two cubs. The man did get some serious injuries in last night's attack, but is expected to survive. That bear was tracked and euthanized. Officials are still looking, though, for the cubs, which will be trapped and relocated to a wildlife rehab facility. A woman was dragged into a van screaming in the morning in a busy area. And police say this possible abduction happened just blocks from Sloan's Lake yesterday near 10th and Sheridan. Now police are searching for a white Dodge minivan with California plates that they say the woman was seen getting dragged into. A neighbor we spoke with believed the van's plate read AV52012 or something along those lines. If you have any information, call police. Denver School Board Director Tay Anderson is stepping away from his duties as the sexual misconduct investigation against him continues. Anderson says, quote, these unsubstantiated false allegations have caused a great deal of trauma to our entire district and our students deserve better. The school board says Anderson will still vote on necessary board decisions like hiring the new superintendent. An honor flight to honor those who made the ultimate sacrifice. Today, there were multiple events across Colorado in honor of Memorial Day, and this flyover happened in Pueblo, and the weather cleared up just enough to see it happen. Thank goodness. A disabled veteran here in Denver is now looking for help. His business is in limbo after thousands of dollars of tools were stolen right out of his truck. Denver 7's Gary Broad has more. They got everything, man. It was, it was soul crushing. After spending six years in the Army, Brian Nicola has been working to grow his handyman business. Every dime that I had that didn't go toward food or rent went toward tools and building, business. and building my business. Last week, the business he worked so hard to build was hit with a major blow. It just, it really hurts to come out and just see everything that you work so hard for for this lawn just gone. Nicola says in the dead of night, outside of his apartment at the Hudson at Highline, his van was broken into. They actually bent the, the metal in to try and reach down to get to this door right here, but they couldn't. So when they did that, I think they just came around to the back and smashed the door. The thieves got away with tools and appliances. Apartment sized washing machine right here. Um, that they took as well. Nicola estimates his losses are in the thousands. I would say anywhere in the uh, the range of six to eight thousand dollars with the tools. Nicola tells us his business insurance won't cover what was taken because it didn't happen on a job. And even though it happened outside of his apartment, renters insurance won't cover it because the company considers the stolen items business property. Hey, where's that leaving me right now? Broke. We can't even. I mean, we can't. We can't even do the jobs to get the money to get the tools back. To make matters worse, the thieves also stole the van's catalytic converter. I mean, when I start this thing, it sounds like a, a race car. But that is getting taken care of thanks to the generosity of a local dealership. General manager of Groove Forward did come. He messaged me on Facebook because I've put this out, you know, across the, the groups and stuff like that as many as I could find um, about our situation. He caught in contact with me and let me know that he's going to come pick up the van tomorrow um, with their tow truck and they're going to replace the windows and the uh, the catalytic converter for us for free. Nicola doesn't expect to get his property back. Denver Police Department says no arrests have been made. In Denver, Gary Broad. It hurts. <laughs> Definitely hurts. Denver 7. And Brian has started a GoFundMe to try to get his truck fixed and hopefully raise money to buy back some of those tools. We've got a link to it on this story up right now on the DenverChannel.com. Making sure people have a place to honor even the most recent service members who died for our country. It's okay to recognize that individual men and women have stood up 
answered our nation's call and continue to serve. The new bill being pushed by our Colorado congressman and veteran himself. And hitting the water once again. A lot of fun. Yes. The rapids are amazing. It's a good water level. It's flowing well. Colorado rafting companies are ready for a busy season. And a modern program training our Colorado nurses with a throwback to the 90s. And it, it just sounded fun, honestly. And you don't see a lot of that in my job.